panelists and my dear friends. I love coming to Gandhira and I think I was very thrilled at the invitation which is why I am here. What is Gandhiji's concept of Swaraj? Gandhiji's concept of village plan. Recently I had the occasion to revisit that and talk to an audience of Gandhians on Gandhiji's Panchayati Raj. You are sure you know it, but I'll give some excerpts from what I spoke. I don't know how many of you remember that Gandhiji said objective of Panchayat Raj is to double the village income. We don't attribute this economic calculations of doubling income to Gandhian thought. But he said, by Panchayat Raj, you will double the income. You will, and another great thing, Swaraj has but one meaning, eradication of poverty and freedom of every man and woman. So there is equality. So that's the meaning of Swaraj. Then, educating the masses, citizen education. And it's a very deep kind of, from Naitalim to, and what is a, educating the masses? Basic skills. Then understanding their sense of their capacity to regulate and control authority. So it's not education, not just giving some skills for a job. It's a citizenship to regulate and control authority. And acquisition of capacity by all to resist authority when abused. So that's the meaning of capacity building training. In a sense, it's conscientization. Then Gandhiji spoke of managing local resources. Gandhiji spoke of I didn't know that before. Use of local materials. I knew he spoke of local materials, but he specified within five kilometers. So you're not going out to get materials. You're trying to use local materials. I am reminded of Baker's architecture, where you use local materials. And they're beautiful. They're lasting. And by any sense of the term, uh, they are robust. So use of local materials, he said, within five kilometers. And what are the villages, elements of a village plan, as Gandhiji saw them. First he said, the human development part was most important. Though Gandhiji didn't use the word human development. What he said, first problem to be solved is sanitation. He has said two, three times. That's the first problem to be solved. Now it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem. It's not ODF. It's beyond OD open defecation thing. It is sanitation. It's a larger thing for public health. Closely linked to sanitation is public health. The word he used is no plague, no cholera, no smallpox. Now we still have cholera, but we don't have plague and smallpox. But there are so many new things coming up. So that is the public health part. Then education for full employment. So these are the human development parts of a panchayat plan. Then comes the economic development part. Agriculture, food self-sufficiency to keep you employed. Village industry. And even transportation, Gandhiji mentioned, and animal husbandry and all those kind of things. So there's an economic development component of Gandhiji's village plan. And then your so-called civic amenities. He used the word well-ventilated dwellings. I don't know why Gandhiji used that term. Well-ventilated dwellings. So that light, fresh air, you're open to nature. Waterworks, public, public theater and playground. We don't see it as part of the civic, basic human needs and civic amenities. And then, of course, get rid of intoxicants, village, village artisans. Then he used, spoke the word village artisans, village poet, village artist. So there is a cultural life in the village. So these are the elements of a village plan. So I'm sure, so this is not philosophy I'm speaking, this is reality. Within this, whatever is your service area, how many village plans can you develop which are very close? Interpret this to the villagers. This is what Gandhiji said. Not that, and never ever say, beyond Gandhiji we will not go. That is, go, goes against the spirit of Gandhians. What the villagers want, their own modern needs. So you all fit it, you have a beautiful village plan. Now what do you do? Certain general things, which you may be doing, nothing I am saying is new to you. You know them. I am only reiterating. And from an outsider's perspective, not only from a neighboring state, I was 
four years in government of India as additional secretary of rural development, secretary Panchayat Raj, and for two months secretary of rural development also. So having seen the whole of the country, what I'm speaking is relevant to whole of India and not for you alone. So from that. And you have a fantastic strength, the name of Gandhi Gram. I don't think any except Ravindranath Tagus, Shantini Gedan. Shantini Gedan and Gandhi Gram alone of all the educational institutions in India have that historic name which reverberates. It's associated with the spirit of the freedom struggle. So you're lucky. It's a given to you. You inherited it. A great legacy. Plus, I learned from Professor Palnidharai for the institute as a whole, you have about 200 faculty, part-time and full-time. You have about 500 PhD scholars, a huge <coughs> wealth. And you have about 1,500 PG and about equal number of undergraduate students. I, I don't know if I am right. That's a number I got from him while chatting. So the power you have. So how do you use it? One thing mentioned both by the Vice Chancellor and Professor Palnidharai is extension. I'm a student of rural, rural development. And the most successful period of India's rural development was when we practiced extension from 1950 to 1970. Now everybody, particularly government servants at the cutting edge, have lost the capacity to do extension. You teach extension, but can you do extension? If you do extension, alcohol abuse will come down in two days. That is the power of extension. What is the most difficult thing to change in a person's life? Your food habits. Do you know how the Mahila, Samajam, Mahila Samajams of 1950s changed food habit? Particularly in Kerala. Keralaites don't eat wheat. They didn't like wheat. And all our breakfast items are made with rice. They are they're very specific to Kerala. But the Mahila Samajams went and taught the village women that you can make godumba putta, wheat putta, wheat dosha, and you can eat chapatis. So Kerala, one of the favorite food now is Godamba Buddha. It's, it's a, your dietary thing has changed. So that was the power of extension, the practice of extension. You are not just giving a message. You are conveying one extension message to one family by one person. The whole village will change. But that, it's not a simple thing. It's not conveying in certain words, certain messages. There's a way of conveying. How do you sit and get an idea sold? Unless you are part of it and they trust you, they will, especially 21st century, when they get millions and millions of messages from all kinds of media, why should they listen to a student, a PhD student or a lecturer from Gandhi Gram? So that is very critical. Then of course, your we have a friend, common friend, all of us, one Ragu, T.R. Raghunandan, who retired, took a voluntary retirement as a civil servant. He used the word demand-based capacity building. Not giving training what you are deciding, but what people are asking. So can you send out of this thing? We are willing to give capacity on these areas. What do you want to learn? And we respond to it. Of course, we can't teach every individual what he or she wants, but you can do certain common teaching, what people want. We don't design. It, in a sense, it's a mo mo modern market, what people want. So demand-based capacity building. And your capacity building is not of stakeholders, which is easy. Capacity building of individuals is easy. But capacity building of institutions is difficult. Capacity building of an SSG as a whole. Capacity building of village panchayat as a whole. Capacity building of a farmer's cooperative as a whole is a huge challenge. Introduce, I don't think, little bit of thing we can very easily do. Very easy compared to capacity building of institutions. Then, going to another area where you can do, I'm not putting up in the, lo in the logic, the general things which you can do is distance education. These days, they are becoming very important. And so easy these days. So you can tie up with IGNU or I think you yourself have a distance education. Not much. But IGNU has a fantastic, I think, must be world class, the way they de design uh, distance education. Even I asked NARD and Panjayat, National Institute of Rural Development Panjayat Raj to learn from them. It's a very, very robust methodology 
of having distance education and high quality stuff. That is something where you can tie up and do. Then another area where you can do is exposure modules, I will call that, to bring people and show them how exactly Gram Panchayat Development Plan is working. And Tamil Nadu has a very good NRGS system. Tamil Nadu has a very good water supply system compared to the rest of India. And Tamil Nadu has a very good SSG system. So you are, Gandhi Gram says, five-day course for BDOs of any state, we will take you on a practical exposure of some development, three, four things, which you can do. Knowledge bank is again a modern concept with modern IT. All the rural development literature from 1950s, 40s on extension, everything can be put searchable in different uh, categories so people don't have to spend a lot of time. Again, they will use. And another important area where Gandhi, I would give a lot of priority is a word called action research. You must be doing it where you are going out, sitting with the people, and jointly, your co researchers. You're not, you don't have solutions. Even the thesis comes from the people and you are trying to do that. Then another big area of work is so-called incubation. Certain models you are incubating. You would identify three, four, five according to people's needs and incubation is a latest, is a, is a, is a ongoing concept. Then what people want, the word intermediary is a bad word. We don't want people to intermediate. But then many people want an honest intermediary, intermediation. There is a solution here, there is a problem here, and you are intermediating to solve it. So there is a solution offered by the health department. There are sick people here, they don't know. Or they may not, they may not have the access. Or they may, they, may not be, they may be even denied the access. So this intermediation is another great way of doing it. Another thing is a big challenge. You should take it up only if you have the courage. Don't say I advised. What is called conscientization. Teaching people their rights. If you teach them, then they will not be under your control. But there's an excellent book prepared by the Council for Social Development, New Delhi. I think it's uh, eight or 10 years old. It's called Weapons of the Oppressed. When I read that book, I was amazed that does India have so many powerful laws for the poor? They're all laws, not policies. Laws of the land which protect the ordinary person. So when you do intermediation and conscientization, you're fighting for the, can you fight a battle for the poor? When somebody is denied access, can you use the Protection of Civil Rights Act? Gandhigram University becomes a litigant. You need courage. I'm not advising you. If you have the courage, is worth taking it up. So there are millions and millions of laws which are not implemented. Senior Citizens Act, Domestic Violence Act, POXO. These are all happening now. It's a shame to a place like Kerala or Tamil Nadu. Even Kerala has very high number of child sex abuse. So are you getting into these areas of the marginalized using the laws of the land and in many parts of the world, the biggest success of the such proactive groups, including educational institutions, to use law of the land for the poor. It's 100% legal, but that is activism. Then another area where probably you're doing good work, a, a very good concept, which is again a recent concept in development in India, called community resource persons. Creating community resource persons is almost costless. And they are resourced. They may act on their own later. It doesn't require money. So CRP knows what is the law against SC uh, discrimination. He or she will act on it. Or at least will tell them. So that is again a very, very important thing. Another thing I should have told you earlier is certain listening to the voices of the poor. That is very important. Reality comes, read Robert Chambers, you'll understand what this means. A whole lot of Gram itself can develop a series of PRA techniques or adapt PRA techniques for as locally used. PRA techniques are not very uh, in, cast in stone. You can develop. For this purpose, for alcohol abuse, what is a PRA technique? 
For Gram Panchayat Development Plan, what is a PRA technique? Robert Chambers has not prescribed. For sanitation, what is a PRA technique? For sustainable development goals, what is a P PRA technique? So this participatory technique is another area where you can really do a lot of work. Then your students, as part of their curri curriculum, should have what the old anthropologists called immersion. They go and live in a cherry for two weeks with nothing, no syllabus, nothing. They go and stay and come out with their understanding of what a cherry life is or any, any difficult area, a tribal hamlet high in the hills or a typical fisher folk village. So this immersion part is very critical for a rural university. And then formal attachments with NGOs, village organizations of the poor, village panchayats, and so on. I can go on and on, but I'll quickly go through some more points. Mentoring other colleges, because you have a lead position. This is something which institutions refuse to do. Though as government of India, with money, I pleaded with top institutions in the country, we'll give you money, can you go and mentor some institutions? Unfortunately, academic egos are far worse than bureaucratic egos. Very surprising. I thought wisdom and knowledge means less ego, but wisdom and knowledge means greater ego. It's very shocking. We bureaucrats have a lot of egos, stupid egos. But egos in academic institutions, you should see. I don't want to take names. I know too many names. This is absolutely shocking. And that is the ultimate failing. With all knowledge and this wisdom, it's a stupid thing called ego. Ego has no rational basis. It's a false identity. But still, we nurture it. My institution will not go. We are slightly superior to that institution. Nobody is superior to anybody. It's something which we all know. Then another thing which you can do, they're not very closely related, setting up what are called voluntary technical core. This is a concept which is pioneered by EMS Namadripad in Kerala. There are a lot of people who have come back, particularly states like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, so North Indian states will find it a little difficult. Who have come back and stayed in villages, would have been an engineer in the Gulf, a computer specialist in US, they all come back. They are willing to spare five hours in a year to go and sit with the villagers to give advice. So can you bring them together? They'll not come, they can't come together. So can you bring them together is going to be very, very challenging. This one area is again costless. You just search the whole district, Dindigal, Madurai districts. There must be 1,000 people. Maybe 200 are willing. 100 will really contribute. If you can do that, you can do a lot. They themselves will go to a village once in a year, talk to the village when it prepares a Narega plan or a GPDP plan. They will help it. Then, documentation and all status studies and all that you know. Status studies is again very, very important. It's holding a mirror to the community. And participatory status studies, status of children, status of uh, differently abled, status of the aged, status of gender. So when you sit with the people and do, there are very good techniques of developing status studies, local micro status studies. And the villagers study that, the panchayat sees it, they respond differently. That is very, very important. Then documentation and all that, I don't have to tell you. But one important practical point is, you work with government of India to the extent possible. So it's not that easy to crack into the government of India. I know in 1992, sir, I, I don't know if I remember, Gandhigram was a national center on sanitation. Only national center on sanitation. It must have started with the Rajiv Gandhi drinking water mission. But somehow it collapsed. I'm sure for certain things, you could be a national center. And at least two, three areas. GPDP could easily be a national center. There, other than Kerala Institute of Local Administration, nobody knows Gram Panjad planning. Nobody knows in India. I can tell you from a position of authority. So that's very easy. So then you, that's a very important practical point. Take it up to a level of excellence. You can't be excellence in all the, you can't reach excellence in all the things which I have said. But in one part, GPDP is a very important thing. Or a poverty-free panchayat. It's prime minister's priority. 50,000 panchayats in India have to be made poverty-free. If you can do, take the lead and develop a methodology and tell all states, people come here, come here. Because you have, see, the cost of an institution in India is very, very meager. So you can do it at almost no cost. You have very Spartan surroundings. People can come, you take them and say that we teach. So you, your experience improves. How Kila has become an international institution? 
Everybody wants to come to Killa. They are coming from Sri Lanka to learn this decentralized planning. And Gandhi Gram can do... Killa has only 13 faculty. Three faculty, sorry. It's only three faculty. And we are teaching the whole of India what is a decentralized planning. And they, are all, they all go back very happy. So, with this kind of... You create some resource Gram Panjais. That's another concept. Don't invest in all the Gram Panjais. There must be some good Gram Panjais. Very poor Gram Panjais. You invest all your energies to develop... Like make, make it a resource in the sense others learn from them. Not the old kind of pilots and model villages, but you are developing them as a school of practice. Financial inclusion, there are so many products, there are so many people here, you are trying to bring. Then, while doing Gram Banjayat, I would request you to do one thing. What is called total achievement. Many Panjayats want to say, I will be a zero dropout Panjayat. I'll be a zero alcohol con consuming panjayat. I'll be a 100% green panjayat. All my buildings will be green. I'll go for total solar energy panjayat. You could think of some 50 ideas. Talk to the panjayats. Many panjayats would accept such an idea. And they are doable. And that motivates the whole thing. Not that if 90% do something else, nothing is wrong. But these kind of things are quite uh, important. Then this Gram Sabha, this SSG Panchayat Convergence. Tamil Nadu has very good SSGs and very good Panchayats. If they can work together, and if you can facilitate their working together, that will again produce a lot of research. Then of course you can get into all the Gram Panchayat schemes, which I don't have to list. Poverty via Panchayats. Then care and compassion. That is what Gram Panchayats are good about. Caring the aged, caring the children, caring people who are about to die. So these are areas where you can uh, get into it. So how do you go about it? Let me conclude with that. It has to be a little formal. You're an educational institution. You can't go, it, go because of your impressions. So you identify areas of interest. Talk to every student. Talk to every PhD student. Talk to every professor, every lecturer, every guest lecturer. What are your areas of interest? Let's be democratic. Talk to the panjayas. What are your areas of need? And you are mandated to talk. It's not a voluntary activity. There's a policy by UGC, and you are under UGC, which says that you know every university, there's a letter, letter to the vice chancellor from the UGC chairperson about a year back, that you will do something for your panchayats. It's mandated by national policy. It's called Unnat Bharat Abhyan. Go to the HRD site, download the guidelines. They're very general guidelines. It's up to you to create. And then you do some kind of a scoping study and get into a consensus with staff and students. Yes, this is what we'll do. This is how far we'll do. And start small. Don't bite off more than what you can chew. And then latch on to volunteers. Volunteers among staff, volunteers among students, volunteers among panchayats, volunteers among SSGs. And areas of need. We are totally helpless situation. They are crying for need. And then you form groups, train them, and lace. But lacing with departments is very important, particularly in Tamil Nadu. You can't do anything outside the government. It's a reality, whether we like it or not. But Gandhi Gram advantage, university advantage, legacy advantage, you can work with the RD department, panchayat department, women and child development department, SCST, so easily. And then you don't stop with it. You have a clear plan of action using whatever name you call it, a results-based framework. For 2017-18, we will go to 23 panchayats, do this thing. This is how we will judge by. These are the timelines. Who will do what? Who are responsibilities? Costs. Where do you get the costs? Ministry of Panchayat Raj will give you part of it. Rural development will give part of it. There are various trusts. A lot of trusts now. Internal, external funding is very difficult now. Internal trusts. Asi Premji or anybody. Narana Murthy. They are trust. They are all willing to give if there is a mean. And CSR. A lot of them, sir was mentioning yesterday. They are willing to give it if it is a genuine organization. You have the credibility, you have the name. So, then of course you do all the teaching for trainer, uh, training of teachers and all those things which we do. And you said, and don't go for the NAC accreditation standards. That's you have to, you have to, can't say, we will not do that. But set your own standards. Keep on improving it. As I said, child-friendly panjayat. It should be a rural-friendly university. What are the 10 indicators, 20 indicators? 
and then try to do. And what do you get out of this? It's not a charitable activity. It's not a Mother Teresa kind of activity for soul satisfaction. It is, you learn by doing, much more than a textbook. A student goes in your village, knows more about rural India than reading all M.N. Srinivas. So that kind of thing. It's a deeper understanding of society development, and this is important for all vocations. A student may go to some uh, company, marketing, but understanding people. It's actually about understanding people, not about poor and whether they need a cow or a goat. So this understanding. And you get the gratitude of the people. And the Wordsworth philosophy, little nameless unremembered acts, small, small things. Every student will have, at the end of the course, about 10 things to remember. Most of us didn't know at the end of the course. We had a good teacher. We learned a good lesson. But what gratitude we earned from the people is there. The confidence and self-esteem goes up. Of a lecturer who has visited a village five times. Five times just the confidence and self-esteem of that person goes up. You see it. I'm not uh, pontificating. You become rounded personalities, enhanced soft skills, and for the students, a wider job access market. Who, when they, now in these days, they, nobody looks at the qualification. One to one interview. And the moment you say your EQ is very high, you get picked up even in an IT company, even an artificial intelligence company. That broadening of your EQ can happen only through all these kind of things. So build on the advantages of the name and tradition. Inculcate values. That's very important, more than anything else. And I've seen, I just want to take three institutions. Irma of 1980s, not Irma of 2011, 2017. They could inculcate values. Because I have dealt with at least 20, 25 top Irmans who work in most remote parts of India. How Korean could inculcate values? Irma was able to do. How? They did a lot of applied management. Even now they do applied management, except that the fees are, fees are so high that you can't go to a village cooperative and earn your livelihood. But the way they are able to bring principles of rural development into management. I have seen their syllabus, I have studied their syllabus. So, so you learn a lot of lessons from Irma. Don't have the ego saying that Gandhi Gram is older than Irma, so we will not go to Irma. Just see their syllabus and say how much you can fit into it. Another great institution for values. The greatest institution in India I have seen, not that I have seen many institutions, but at the national level I bumped into many institutions. The Christian Medical College, Vellur. How in 21st century, the best medical college in India can send 25% of its people as missionaries all over the world, including Sudan and all parts of the world, and earning nothing. They are all bright kids. They would get in some private hospital some 2 lakh rupees or 3 lakh rupees. They just fan out into India, most difficult parts of India. 25% of them go for this kind of work. 25% of them do some creative research work. Only 25% of them approximately go into some kind of a so-called commercial health institution. So this is a secret. Even in 21st century, the brightest youngsters who are willing to pay one crore to get an MBBS seat, of course in Velour is free and the fees are only 20,000 rupees a year, they are able to mold them. Adolescents, 17-year-old children into some value. Of course it's a Christian value. But then you can make it secular. Values can be, and you can, Gandhian values can be, is multi religious. That's another thing. Another great institution where, where the modern syllabus is there is Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Beyond UGC, beyond everything, you go through the syllabus of any course. It's the latest 21st century syllabus. I don't know how long UGC will allow them because UGC has its own ideology now. So these kind of things, learn from them. So that you are reinventing the Gandhian uh, now and to conclude, be the change you wish to see in the world. And this is not a charitable activity. By doing this, you will gain. All of you will gain. No doubt about it. Thanks.